everyone, this is Catherine O'Connell and welcome to Lawyer On Air. If you are looking for inspirational stories about women in law, then this is the podcast for you. Join me and my lawyer ladies as we enjoy a glass of wine after a hard day at work and talk about the world of women in law. It's my passion to share stories of amazing legal ladies who are working as in-house legal counsel, who have law firm roles, who are leading on boards and who are doing law differently. From time to time, I will also invite special guests on the show to share their insights on legal recruiting and tips for getting hired as a successful lawyer in Japan. I hope you will enjoy getting to know these amazing women who I am so proud to share a profession with. I'm glad you're here and I hope you enjoy the show. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Lawyer On Air podcast. In this episode, I share with you another diverse story of a woman lawyer working in the law in Japan. I'm Catherine, the host of the show, and I'm a lawyer based in Tokyo for more than 20 years. And I love helping unlock the wisdom of the stories that women never tell. What I've learned in my career so far in law is when we work in the law, we can contribute to society. So it's a very rewarding field. Those are the words of my guest today, Tomoko Konishi. Tomoko is General Manager of Corporate Legal Unit in the legal group at JERA. She has worked her entire career inside companies, first with Bridgestone and now in the JERA team. You can check out Tomoko's full bio in the show notes. But on this episode, Tomoko shares her experience that she had across various departments in her first company, where she said yes to the opportunities that came up to her to do many secondments to the corporate planning team and other teams in that company. This has served her very well in the rest of her career and where she is now working in corporate governance. If you're a law student, but you don't really want to qualify as a lawyer, but still interested in working in the law and wondering how you can do that, then this is the episode for you. Tomoko also shares her four tips for working successfully in a legal team. One of those is you've got to know your client, the business department. To hear the other three tips, keep listening to the episode. And Tomoko also shares her favorite saying, her dream project for corporate governance, and something that you may not know about her. Let's get into it. Hello, Tomoko, and welcome to the show. Hello, Catherine. Lovely to have you here. If we were meeting up in person, Tomoko, where would we be? Do you have a favorite wine bar or restaurant that you love to go to? And what would be your choice of beverage off the menu? I recommend an authentic yakitori restaurant called Isehiro. Isehiro. It is, yes, it is between Nihonbashi and Kyobashi. And the yakitoris are grilled by charcoal. Mm, I love yakitori. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it <laughs> might be one of my most favorite pastimes in Japan. If I'm going to dinner and the other person says, where shall we go? I will choose yakitori. Oh, uh, yakitori is my favorite also. And when yeah. you have yakitori, what do you drink with it? Is there something you recommend? Uh, as a starter, beer. Oh, yes. Oh, the that, usual. That's Nihonshu. Nihonshu. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> you just designed my perfect night to have some beer and then have Japanese sake. Yay. Let's do that sometime. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to talk to you today. I'm looking forward to us chatting. But the first question I usually ask is about background. And if you think back to when you were a child or a young adult, do you know what kinds of careers you were maybe thinking about or dreaming about? What you wanted to do in the future? I grew up in Kanagawa and I love the books. My parents gave me many books mm. and within those uh, series of biographies of great people. But within that, there are only a few of female careers. For example, Florence Nightingale. Oh, yes. Does. Yes, uh, yes. Marie Curie, yes. a scientist. Yeah. So 
I cannot imagine what I can be in the future,、mm. but somehow I want to work and contribute to the world in the future. Wow. Okay. So, you, yeah, I remember reading Florence Nightingale as well. And、oh. thinking how amazing it was that she did all that help as a nurse to other people. But it seemed very distant for me as well. that you, It's interesting you mentioned that. So, when did something like law or that study of law come up for you? Did anyone help you to think about the world of law? My father suggested to me that I could go to the law area if、oh. I want. e d To work for a、oh, long time. Wow. Why, why did he suggest that? Do you know? I don't <laughs> know exactly, but、mm. a law degree was good for me,、yeah. he might think. Wow. It might be when you have Oshogatsu, your New Year's holiday, if you are, have a time to ask, it would be good to know why he asked that. So, what happened? Did you go and study law? Yes. I went to the Faculty of Law at Kyoto University.、Mm. I admired the free and creative academic culture. And at that time, I was interested in human rights and criminal procedure and belonged to the Criminal Procedure Law Seminar. What's interesting about human rights and criminal procedure for you at that time? What did you like about it? When I was a student, I learned a lot about、mm. litigations about human rights, and I was impressed. The、oh. law can help many people. And I like also detective <laughs> stories, and I was a bit curious about criminal procedure.、But、oh, it is very connected.、Oh. Detective stories? Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. What kind of detective stories? <laughs> so, Sherlock Holmes. And, ah, yes. And Arsene Lupin. Yes. And again, there were no female detective stories in that time, right? No female.、Uh, no just female. Usually, yeah, yes.、Yeah. Sherlock Holmes, though. Yes. Wow. Okay. That's really interesting. So now you are working with Jera, but let's go back a little bit more into the study and career history. So after graduation from Kyoto University, which is a great university, the Faculty of Law, I believe you decided to join an in house legal team and not join a law firm. Was there some reason for that? As a matter of fact, I'm not a Bengoshi a certified lawyer, so I didn't think of entering into a law firm. So I was looking for an、uh, in house legal department. Ah,、oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And so you joined the legal department at Bridgestone. When, when was that? 2003. 2003. So that's, I was already, I came to Japan and that was my first year in Japan actually doing in house legal work. So you joined legal department at Bridgestone and I was in another legal department of a company as well. That's interesting. So if anyone knows about 2003, it's a time when there was quite a big issue for Bridgestone. You had the voluntarily recalling of tires in the USA and lots of legal issues, which are all open in the public. But some people might not join a company when they think maybe the company's performance may not be so good or they're having that kind of trouble. But you did that. You were very brave. Why did you not worry and decide to join a challenging situation? I was excited to join Bridgestone because I was seeking a new experience. So, as to gaining experience, the harder, the better, I thought. Maybe it was reckless. <laughs> oh, but maybe not reckless. Really, very <laughs> interesting to take the challenge on. Maybe those books you read when you were younger inspired you. But what was the exciting thing exactly? So,、um, In Japan, 
not so many companies had such issues in the US. So if I experience that area, I can be in the front area of that. Oh, that's a really good answer. Yeah. So what kind of work did you do during those challenging circumstances? While working as a junior associate working on U.S. litigation, I joined a team of hmm. U.S. litigations. And at the same time, I was doing commercial works in Japan, domestic issues. Oh, so you were doing the international, well, U.S. litigation team as well as domestic work. That's very busy. To, I was to, maybe. Yeah, very busy. Yeah, so quite a wide range, a big scope of work. Yes. Yeah, so what kinds of things were you doing exactly? So many areas such as sales contracts yes. and contracts for factory cogeneration services. And I went to group companies and made training on debt collections. I was assigned to a uh, matter related to import, export related matters. It's so many things. Debt collection, yeah. import, export, contracts for factory cogeneration services. That sounds amazing. And sales contracts. That's a lot of work to be doing. Goodness me. Can you have any memorable cases that you might have handled at the time that you can share with us? Yes, one memorable case was the unification of prices for certain services in Japan. This was my first antitrust law-related casework. I proposed changing the commercial distribution system so that it would not violate the anti-monopoly law and prepared to contract to make that happen. This was memorable for me because I felt I could contribute to the customer. I mean, before that, it was road service. So drivers was in trouble and called the service. However, the operator just introduced the subcontractor and they cannot offer the price. But after the change, the driver in trouble can see the price when they call the call center. Oh, I see. So that completely changed things then. You made a big change in that area. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Were there any other memorable cases that you handled? Yes, there was another memorable experience where I was supporting the a uh, diversified business. Although the scale of the business was small, each business was oriented towards a unique business with entrepreneurship. So I provided contractual and legal advice accordingly. I learned a lot from my experience in the business. I made suggestions, but I learned about business by salespeople. So mm. it was great opportunity for me. Yeah, I think so. Going around to the sales offices as well. Maybe not many people in the legal team also visit and do the sales. So that that's a really great experience. You had so many things that you did. I know you before we recorded today, you said that you spent some time working for Bridgestone Sports, which was also one of your favorite jobs. Can you tell me about that? Because that's really interesting. Thank you. When I was a university student, I belonged to a golf club, athletic oh. golf club. Golf club, okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So I know, oh. know the customer and the Bridgestone Sports manufactures golf balls and clubs. And yes, tennis. that's right. Yes, yes. And tennis, tennis balls too. Two, yes, yeah. yes. And I, they sold that two or three years ago. But yes, mm. it, it used to be the tennis business. 
So I know the customer. There are two types of customer, athletic golfer and fun type golfer. <laughs> and I know the background and I know about the tournament. So I can imagine what is happening. So I felt I'm not working. I'm、oh, doing my h o b b y fun. Ooh, I love it. Ooh, that's it, isn't it? When the combination of something you love that's like your hobby can be your work. Ooh, that's、yes. great. So, for example, the golf balls, they put characters on golf balls, then licenses agreement comes to them. And in some cases, they have making apparel, golf wear. Then they have sales and purchase agreement. So、oh, I experienced、yes. many, and、right. in some cases,、uh, Bridgestone Sports is managing the tournament. So they gather voluntary staff and ask them to do something. So they asked me、uh, the relationship between the volunteer staff、oh, and the company. So that's fun. They asked, so that's fun.、Yeah. Wow, so you got to go to the golf course, the, the tournament as part of your job? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you're doing all the licensing agreement for the characters that are on the tennis ball,、uh, ten- golf balls, right? Not golf tennis balls, balls the golf yeah. balls. Yeah, I think if I was playing the golf, I wouldn't want to lose the ball that had the character on it. Yeah, so that's interesting. I had never thought about, of course, licensing agreement for the character that goes onto the golf ball. Yeah, of course, you need a license to have that. Wow, that's amazing. What else then? Because I guess the company was also recovering from the, the tire issues. So maybe rebuilding its corporate philosophy. So, was that also happening at the same time? Yes, at the same time, the company was in the process of re- rebuilding its corporate philosophy and conducting activities to disseminate to its employees to regain the trust of society、mm-hmm. that it has lost due to quality issues in the US. Right. So, the corporate planning department was passionately explaining the corporate philosophy in the in house training, and I took it and I was impressed by their training. So, that's the corporate planning department. Yeah.、Right? So, it's not where you were located, and you were in the legal department, yes? Yes. Oh, yeah. so what happened? Did you. Decide to go to the corporate planning people?、Uh, I was impressed by that training.、Hmm. And after that,、uh, the company conducted the career development meeting、uh, once a year. And at that time, I fell in the paper, my potential position, and I fell in corporate planning. I didn't、oh. have anything in mind. So I you know only. You just wrote that, the, corporate planning. So just, I want to、yeah. join corporate. And did that happen? Did you get transferred to the corporate planning team? Yes.、Oh. Yes. I was transferred to the corporate planning. Oh, what did you do there? In my third year,、hmm. I was transferred to the corporate planning as a staff member of a board of directors, secretariat.、Oh. As background, The, the position was a salesperson、mm. uh, who is good at management, also. But under the company situation, the business planning department general manager thought I should be replaced to legal staff. So they asked the legal department to send some people. Oh, I see. So the legal, you were like a secondi over to the,、yeah. to the corporate planning team. I see. So what happened next? So the company was also moving into a phase where quality projects h a s settled down and focusing on business activities. And the CEO was changed.、Mm. So the staff was totally. Changed at that time, and I was in charge of 
board of directors. So I checked the materials and attend the meeting and work as a timekeeper. And, and after that, I made uh, minutes. Yes. Mm. So, yes. wow, lots of work to do. Yeah, it's always very yeah. busy doing the secretariat of the board of directors. It's a really important job. What did you learn after moving there from legal to the corporate planning team? Was it was it really useful for your career as well? Uh, it was very useful for me. Uh, in addition to the board secretariat, I'm also in charge of shareholders meeting. And I wrote the script of the, wow. the CEO, and I was in charge of the company's midterm plan a bit because the corporate planning was dealing midterm plan, and they have in shortage of people. So I was also in charge of midterm plan monitoring system. Mm. So. So I learned a lot about company right. and, and I worked with high performance people. I learned from top level people. So I brushed up my way of working. Ah, I see. That's really interesting. Wow. Did you have any other opportunities at Bridgestone? It sounds like you got lots of experience. Was there anything else you did there? Yes, I was then transferred to the auditor's office, corporate auditor's office, which was another great experience. There were five auditors at that time, and two of them, the in-house auditors, were experts in technical and financial fields. So I was receiving training while performing my duties. My role was to be a secretariat. I made the first draft of annual auditing plan and arranged the visiting of group companies, domestic and abroad, and preparing for the board of auditors meeting and prepare for the shareholders meeting for audit report. Mm, these are all very important jobs to do as well. Wow, what else? Through your work on the audit team, what else did you do? Did you visit many offices and, and lots of countries during that time? Yes, I visited around 50 group companies, 10 countries. Mm. So it was amazing. Wow, that is incredible. I suppose with that experience, you could take charge of quite a number of the very important operations. Yeah, amazing. So did you come back to the legal department eventually? Yes, after three years, hmm. I I returned to the legal department and assigned commercial matters again. Hmm. How was that coming back to the legal department? Was it good to come back? Yes, it was good. I wanted to come back because hmm. I enjoyed my work at that time, but a bit afraid I might forget something. Ah, I see, yes. Other sections in the company borrowed you from the legal department with your skills, and then you came back. So looking back now, what do you think about all of those experiences you had? For example, if other people were listening to this today and they think, hmm, someone's given me the offer to do similar rotations in their organization, would you recommend that they do that? Yes, I highly recommend that. You can get a lot of good experience, yeah? Even though you're away from the legal team, it's still, you get great experience. Yes, legal knowledge is very important, but having that working as such corporate department is very very good opportunity for mm. us. Mm. Okay, well, that sounds so exciting. What happened next for you? So after that, I got married, had a baby. Mm. So I was away from work for one year and three months. After that, I continued to work on commercial matters. 
so supporting for mainly diversified products and in charge of labor related mm. matters. Mm. After that, I oversaw the planning work of the legal department and the human resources of the department. So I can use the knowledge of corporate planning and so mixed my experience at that time. Oh, that's great, right? So you could use your previous, the corporate planning experience was really useful at this time as well. Yeah. Ah, oh, and okay, what happened next? Such a great story. What happened to you after that? After that, I got elevated to a managerial position in 2015. Mm. Then I gave birth to my second child in 2019. After my second maternity leave, I oversaw commercial deals, M&A deals, and governance-related work, but I somehow wanted to take a new challenge. I was a bit bored. <laughs> yeah, so you, you've done so many things at Bridgestone. What a great place to have learned a lot, experienced a lot, but you somehow want to take on a new challenge. So what did you do to try and find a new challenge? Well, at that time, I heard that the electricity for the company's European plants was to be entirely renewable. So I vaguely thought energy is booming mm. recently. You are right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Then, yes. Yes. Yeah, so right around the time, I happened to hear from a recruiting agent about a job opening at JERA. And I applied for it and successful in the interview and I got it. Wow, congratulations. It's like you're thinking about it because you heard in your company about European factories becoming entirely renewable and that's so true. And then suddenly you get contacted by a recruitment company about an opening at JERA. It's like it's meant to be for you. Yeah, it really oh, is. I think so. Yeah. So when was that? What year was that? 2021. 2021. Oh, so it's even during the pandemic. <laughs> so we've had a few of your team from Jera on the podcast and we love them all. So whereabouts do you fit into the team there? And tell me a bit more about what your job is now. I'm a general manager of a corporate legal unit and in charge of board of directors. Right. So and, and yes. shareholders meetings. Right. And the unit also covers internal rules, etc. Yes. So you've continued to do that kind of corporate secretarial work that you did when you were in the previous company and went on the mini secondment, right? Yeah. Is it a little different to Bridgestone though? I think it's similar. Mm. The business is a bit different, but company is now getting bigger and bigger mm. and the company is very new new now. Actually Jera is a joint venture of Chubu Electricity Company and Tokyo Electricity Company established in 2015 so they are now making corporate philosophy and corporate culture etc so yeah. i think it's similar from to me mm, it's still a young company and so much work to do so at first what kind of work did you start doing i started reviewing the materials of board meeting and what's it like now because you're in the legal group right of the corporate legal unit what's that like so the most important thing is efficient information is filled in the materials and the easy reading is very important because the top management has not much time yes so... absolutely <laughs> true yeah exactly so things have to be easy to read and digest very quickly so at first, I made a couple of templates of the material. Right. I guess that changed things to make it easier to record the information and give the easy to read information to the board. Yes. 
mm. and made guidelines for making materials. Right. Yeah. And is yeah. what kind is that the kind of work you're doing now? Still working with the board meetings yes. and keeping everything yes. up to date. Oh, I see. Yes. After that, corporate governance. Um, at that time, the unit's responsibility was only limited to the reviewing materials. And after that, I brought them our responsibility to corporate governance. I checked mm. uh, through corporate governance code in Japan and reviewed it and explained to the board meeting. And after that, our responsibility was broadened to the board effectiveness. So now our responsibility is wide, wider than that at mm. first. So why why do you like this work? What is it that makes you feel mm, rewarded? What what do you like about this work that you do? I think the company is very important to the society because the company make one third of the electricity in Japan. So to contribute to the board is to contribute to the society, I think. So it is very rewarding to me. Yes. The company announced that the independent officers criteria and selected independent outside directors and auditors. You can see at Nikkei about that. So even though the company is now a private company, we want to make the level of corporate governance as high as we can. So Tomoko, please finish this sentence for me. The most important thing I have learned in my career so far is... The most important I have learned from my career so far is we can contribute to the society by utilizing law. Ah, yes, that's exactly true. And I think when we start in the law, we don't always think about that, but that's a really great point. Thank you so much for your really great outline of your career path so far. And I, I just love that you've challenged to do so many different things. Uh, and that's now bearing fruit for you at your current company. So I want to shift gears a little bit. Let me ask you what advice you might have for law students or people who want to work in the legal team, but may not necessarily do that work as a lawyer, but want to utilize the law degree and their experience. What kind of advice would you have for them? Working in-house is one of the choice because you can deal with wide scale of business. And considering about work-life balance, working in a company is good choice, I think. So talking about working in-house, in the in-house legal team, what would be some of your tips, maybe one or two or three top tips to have a really good success as a legal team member? One is knowing client. Ah, oh, knowing the client, yeah. which is the company, yes? Yes, but yeah. business department is your mm. client. Mm. So knowing client is very important. Right. And the fact is very important. The facts, yes. Anything else? And my great boss said to me at first, do your own thing before you worrying about other people. Do your own thing before worrying about other people. First, I was caring about many people. Like they are in trouble over there and they are in trouble over there. Ah. They are in trouble over there. But he said to me, <laughs> at first, do your own job. After that, care about other people. Ooh, so Great advice, right? <laughs> that, that would have changed everything for you. I'm sure yeah. everything changed. And four. Oh, yeah, four. Uh, after, bonus. It's a after, bonus. After returning from maternity leave, I agreed to the CEO at that time because he was my big boss when I was in corporate business planning, corporate mm. planning department. Mm. Then uh, he doesn't talk much usually mm. and always. And he said, 
Don't quit easily. Don't quit easily. What does that mean? Yeah. So when I returned from the maternity leave, at that time, not many pe- female employees are working with kids. So he told me, don't leave the company easily. Oh, he wanted you to continue to work and show that you could work as a female and also have look after your family. Yes. How did you feel when he told you that? Did you feel some pressure or, yes, I'm going to do that? What did you think? I know him well. Mm. So I thought he was encouraging me a lot. Yeah, yeah. I think so. So after that, that, I have many hard time because I didn't have much time. And it wasn't easy. No. But, but he supported um, you. It sounds like he, yeah, you know, he so knew. Every time, mm. Yeah, every time I remember that words. Wow, very encouraging. Yeah, he saw you. He recognized you, that you were working in the company and also being a mom, and, and he wanted to support you. So knowing he thought about that about you was really good for you to keep going. Do you have time these days to do work outside of your family work and your company work? For example, are you doing any outside activities? Maybe it's family work, but I have a son who is now studying in Hokkaido. Mm. He is he is going to a junior high school in Hokkaido. So I sometimes act as PTA oh, of yeah. his school mm. and supporting the examination mm, that's hard coming work. in February in Tokyo. Yeah. Oh, yes. So. Yes. That's a lot of work to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's finish up with some maybe lighter questions, but I'd really love to know uh, your favorite saying, maybe uh, kotowaza or something in English or in Japanese. Can you tell me what that is? There is nothing to be feared. It's only to be understood. It is a word from Marie Curie. I mentioned at the first oh. time. During the pandemic, I got a bit nervous mm. and care about my children. But at that time, I found the word and encouraged. How did you find oh. that expression, nothing to be feared, only to be understood? Through internet, I remember. Oh, again, it's like before when you were talking about the opportunity for Jera coming up. It's like this came up when you needed it. Timing is very important, I think. Wow, that's amazing. Well, can you share a book actually that you've read or something that you would recommend for people to read? Dopamine Addiction. It is written by Anna Lempuge. Mm. And it is about the human brain and how dopamine enhance one's activities but on the other hand it can be addictive so making balance is very important i yes, see okay he, he said. okay all right let me ask you another question then um if i could take away all the barriers and constraints from a legal project so there was no concern about budget or cost or number of people. What kind of project would you like to do? I want to utilizing AI and make it create board meeting materials. <laughs> that would be very useful. Please do that. <laughs> it's a great idea. Wow. Okay. So I found a question from chat GPT, which is this question. I wonder if you can answer it. Let me see. If you could create a new law, a new law for this modern world we're in, what kind of law would you like to create? Maybe in the foreign country, it is already hard, maybe, but to protect children, Mm. I want to create a new law. Yeah. That's a great, great answer. And the last question is, what is something about you that a lot of people don't know? When I was a university student, I did a part-time job as caddy. So I can tell other people about the distance 
Oh, of the between the t- the holes between of the, the golf course. Yes, hole. <gasps> yes, that's amazing. That's something I didn't know about you. Wow, I wonder if anyone in your team knows that. That's so cool. Thank you so much, Tomoko. Wow, it's been amazing to have you on the Lawyer On Air podcast. Thank you so much for being very brave and coming on and speaking today. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. And I for people, yeah. Oh, sorry, carry on. I enjoyed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed, enjoyed it this time. Good. Well, for people who are interested in connecting to you and they want to learn some more, where can they do that? Is Should that be through LinkedIn? Yes, everybody can connect to me through in- LinkedIn. Great. Thanks so much. We'll put that in the show notes. And so for everyone who is listening, if you enjoyed this episode and it's inspired you, I think it should, right? From being not just working in law, but working in lots of different departments and increasing your experience. It sounds like it's a great idea to do. Please tell us if what you enjoyed out of this episode. Uh, leave us a review and share this episode with someone who you think will really enjoy it and live an inspired life as Tomoko has been doing. Thank you everyone for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. Cheers, come pie and bye for now. Thank you so much for listening today to this episode of Lawyer On Air. I really hope that you were inspired by the story you heard and that you discovered something new about women in the law. Please subscribe to the show so that you don't miss future episodes. And if you can think of even just one person to share this episode with, that would make my day. I invite you to connect with me to talk more. Jump on over to LinkedIn or Instagram where you can find me or send me a message via my website contact page. That's all from me today. I look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Lawyer On Air. Cheers, come pie, and bye for now.